I once worked as a direct care aide for a 65-year-old woman with a developmental disability. Her daughter was in her 40s, worked overnights, and she needed a caretaker with medical experience to watch her overnight. When I say once worked for them, I mean I literally worked once just this night. And you're about to hear why I never went back. The 65-year-old woman's name was Martha. Her daughter's name, who contacted me, was named Colleen It's Possible. Colleen didn't have any other family to watch her, didn't want to, or couldn't afford to put Martha in a nursing home. Or it was possible that she felt more comfortable hiring somebody with some form of experience to watch over her. At the time, I was already a direct care worker for two other women who suffered some forms of developmental disabilities, so I had experience. But nothing prepared me for that night. Colleen left for work. Earlier that day I worked my first job, so I was really pushing my body to exhaustion, trying to make as much money as possible. Colleen had introduced Martha and I. Martha had given me a smile before. Colleen brought her upstairs to her bedroom for the night. It was around 9 p.m. Colleen told me that Martha would sometimes walk around the house at night acting confused and I need to calm her down and bring her back to her room. She specifically addressed this not to be a form of sleepwalking. When I asked, she said it's one of the symptoms of her mother's dementia. I told her to rest assured that I know how to handle it. I spend my time initially in the living room, catching up on my show. These jobs aren't super glamorous and for the most part, it is a lot of sitting around. I heard footsteps from upstairs. I went to the stairway and looked up the stairs. Then called Martha's name asking if she needed anything. She didn't answer. I heard her footsteps go back to her room. And then the door closed. Maybe she went to the bathroom. I went back to the living room and watched some more TV. It was maybe an hour later that I got up to grab my sandwich that I brought from the fridge. As I left the kitchen with a plate and my sandwich to go back to the couch, I nearly had a heart attack and dropped the plate. When I saw Martha standing at the doorway, glass shattered everywhere. I apologized to her and asked if she was okay. She started yelling at me. Who are you? I reminded her who I am. I'm her direct care worker here to make sure she's okay. Everything she said at this point wasn't a loud scream. Why are you here? I don't know you. Things of that nature. I reminded her that we had just met and that's her mother. Colleen hired me to watch her and the house. This seems to work for long enough for me to get her to come back upstairs with me and to her room. I brought her up a glass of water and some melatonin and clonazepam. I made sure she took both before going back downstairs. After a few hours I was absolutely exhausted. I had to get a couple hours of shut eye. There was a spare bedroom upstairs with a twin-size bed, where Colleen said I could rest if needed. I felt like at this point, Martha was asleep for the night from the melatonin. I fell asleep within minutes, but I was asleep for only maybe an hour. I woke up to a sound from downstairs. It was this repeated slamming. Everyone two two seconds, something from downstairs was being slammed. I jumped out of the bed. I'd left the bedroom door open, 
so that I'd hear anything if Martha got up. Case in point right here. When I got to the stairs, I realized the slamming was coming from the kitchen. I walked down the stairs and as quick of a speed as I could while still remaining quiet. Getting to the bottom, I appeared around the opening to the kitchen. And what I saw was like a scene from a scary movie I'd seen before. I saw Martha in the darkness, standing in front of the oven, repeatedly opening it and slamming it. Shut it was horrifying. When I say I saw Martha, I really only saw her silhouette. It was that dark in the kitchen. I said Martha really loudly and she stopped. Turned to her left at me. Shut the oven door one final time. And started walking towards me. Towards the stairs. I said in a now softer kind of scared sounding voice. Are you okay? She got close enough to me, where I can now see her facial features. And she looked at me with this blank expression. Then walked right past me, and started walking up the stairs. I followed her upstairs. But as soon as she got to her room, she slammed her door shut. I knocked on the door saying, Martha, are you alright? She didn't respond. I quietly opened the door just to peek inside and I saw Martha the side of her bed just standing facing the wall. I've seen a lot but this was some pretty unsettling behaviour that I feel like it's the exact kind of stuff you'd see in some scary movies like I mentioned before. I walked over to her and gently eased her into the bed. When she was laying down I covered her and for what I was hoping would be the final time, I said goodnight Martha and shut her door. I went across the upstairs to the spare room and went back to bed. I purposely tried not to fall asleep for at least half an hour just in case you wake up again. But I don't even know if I made it that long. All I know is I fell asleep pretty freaking quickly. I woke up once again, however, much later. The room was still pitch black and the one hour alarm, I said had not yet gone off. Looked around the room wondering what woke me up. I didn't see what it was until I heard a sound from inside the closet and then noticed the cracked open closet door and the black shadow of the head peeking out of the closet. Again, I almost had a heart attack. I said Martha. She didn't answer. I kept seeing Martha a bunch of times until she pushed the door open and I saw her approaching the bed, slowly. She started saying what she was saying hours ago again. Who are you? I don't know you. She got closer, I tried calming her down, reminding her who I am. I reached for the lamp next to the bed and fumbled with it until it turned on. Martha was holding a huge kitchen knife in her hand. At this moment, everything changed. Martha was now a threat to my life and I had to worry about myself, not her. I screamed at this point. Martha put the knife down. I guess my scream stressed her out because she got closer and started screaming back at me, still repeating I don't know you. I wasn't going to attempt to calm down a knife welding. Dementia patients that was not in any job description. I mapped out a way to run around her in the bedroom and I went for it. I jumped off the bed on the side further from her and she screamed again, who are you? She swung the knife at the air as I ran past her. It was a slow and weak swipe from what I saw, but nonetheless showed that she had intentions of actually using it. I got downstairs and grabbed my shoes and went outside. 
Instead of calling 911, I called Colleen as she requested I do. If there's an issue, I was courteous in doing this, because getting law enforcement involved is never doing anyone any favors. Colleen was yelling into the phone at me, not to leave her and honestly. I yelled back that she attempted to kill me, and that I didn't call the police. She had to leave work of course. I stayed outside of the house, making sure Martha didn't go anywhere until Colleen returned. When Colleen went inside, Martha was back in her bed asleep. Colleen went as far as accusing me of exaggerating the whole thing until she found the knife next to Martha's bed. To not give her any more fuel, to blame me for any of this, I left out the fact that I ever went to sleep. But that doesn't mean that I felt in any way I did anything wrong. Colleen even offered me that room to sleep. I never worked in that house again. Martha was a scarier patient than I'd ever dealt with in any of my jobs in my nine years of being a direct care aide. It was my first day working for this plumbing company. I was called in for my first job to this house out of town. The plumbing company had five employees and the owner would choose who does what job. I don't see it as a coincidence that I was sent to some undesirable job far away in a shitty area for my first job. The call was for a leaky pipe under the sink which is typically the easiest, most basic job to get a call for, depending on the root cause of it. I pulled up to the house my first ever call, and it was an absolutely disgusting looking house, completely run down, as if no one had lived there for years. I went up to the house and knocked until a middle-aged man opened the door. I didn't like his aura from the start, he had this unflattering, disproportionately wide smile that made his entire face appear off-putting. His voice was also really soft and high-pitched. Not the voice I was expecting to come out of his mouth. Or maybe it was given his unusual appearance. He welcomes me inside of the house. I realized there wasn't a single piece of furniture in the house. Just moved in I asked him. He replied yes and then shackled. Or maybe I should say he giggled because it was just a weird high-pitched little laugh. He brought me to the kitchen and the first thing I did was set my stuff down on the counter then open the cabinets under the sink. I slid myself under the sink and started to examine the pipe, specifically looking at the P-trap and the lock nuts, to make sure they weren't overly tight or loose. I noticed the man was standing directly over me. His legs spread wide, so that I was sandwiched between both of his feet. It was extremely uncomfortable. I asked him politely to give me some space, he backed up a bit, but not enough that would make me feel comfortable. I realized that I didn't see any water leaking at all. So I got out from under the sink and tried running the water, but no water came out of the faucet. I looked at the weird man and asked him why the water wasn't running. He said he must have shut off the main water valve without realizing it. When I say I stood there speechless for a few seconds, I'm not exaggerating, I asked him bluntly. How do you do something like that by mistake? He smiled and shrugged his shoulders. I asked him to go turn the water valve back on. He turned and said he'd be right back. And I saw him leave the kitchen 
and I heard footsteps walking upstairs. I never in my life heard of a water valve being upstairs in any house. I knew something was off with this guy and the situation. Everything from the condition of this house to his mannerisms and then. I started hearing multiple sets of footsteps from upstairs. Coming down the steps quickly. In a split second I decided I was out of there. I grabbed my stuff and quickly walked out to the front door and to my van. I'm a pretty large and loud dude so I'm not really intimidated very easily by people in a physical way. But there was something about that situation and that guy that told me that some shit was about to go down. I looked at the house for a second and then I drove away. I called Dave my boss letting him know it was just some kind of prank because that just sounded better than me saying I was scared of that guy. I did a few minutes worth of investigating and found out that that was just a vacant abandoned house. I got the number that made the call for the alleged leaky pipe from Dave and it turned out to be a voice over IP number not even a real number. I reported this shady encounter with a local police department just so that they would be aware of it and maybe close off that house. I've never had a reason to return to that sketchy part of town again. I only worked for that specific plumbing company for about a year. Back in 2019 I worked for Domino's. It was my first night I was just starting out. I was only working there because I needed the money for college, supplies for my dorm etc. And so that night I was being trained. When you're being trained, you're accompanied by the manager on your first few deliveries to see how you do and evaluate you and train you. It was late around 8 o'clock. We got an order. Our store wasn't electronic like they are today. We couldn't see where the locations were on a big TV. We had to go look them up on our phones for directions. Got the directions and the pizza. I still remember the order. Four large pizzas with two bottles of PIB. We load them into the car and it was my car since I was the one being evaluated. So it was me, my manager and another trainee who I didn't know. The house we were heading towards was way out of the way in the middle of nowhere. My town was old though, so it was fairly common to go miles without anything. It took us around 15 to 20 minutes to get there. The house looked old, really old. It was an old to story home and it was completely run down. The wood was chipping. Some of the windows had boards on them. It was not a house you'd expect people to be living in. I remember asking my manager if we had to go up there and he told both of us yes, but that he'd come with us and hand them the pizzas and sodas. I hesitantly got out of the car and noticed that the other guy, who was new, was very nervous as well about walking to that front door. We finally started making our way to it when the other trainee said he thought he saw someone watching us from the furthest window from us upstairs. Our manager told him he's just paranoid and that this shouldn't take more than a minute or two making sure to tell us to stay calm and be nice. I don't know how I had the courage to ring the bell, but I did which of course didn't work so my manager pounded on the door. No answer. We waited about 15 seconds and knocked again harder, 
This time, still no answer. We were all getting impatient, and there was a smell of something rotten. We couldn't tell if it was the house, or if something inside had died. Finally, after about a minute of impatiently waiting, someone opens the door, but not completely. They open the door only showing part of their face and asking who we were and what we wanted. My manager said we had their pizza. The guy quickly unlocked the door and acted all friendly towards us. It freaked the three of us out. It was an older gentleman and his fifties at least. He told us it took him a while to open the door because it's hard for him to get around or some shit. Our manager handed him the receipt and asked if he was paying with cash or a check. The man told us he'd be back with the money. He left the front door open, so I looked around to see what the house looked like inside. Empty, completely empty. No furniture or anything in that house. Just the floor and a couple of blankets. Obviously, this guy was homeless and was just living here since no one else was. That's when we heard footsteps coming from upstairs. More than one person too. That's when we got uncomfortable about the situation. The realization of what the other employee said became true someone was probably watching us as we walked to the front door. My manager yelled out if the man had the money yet, but he never got a response back. Footstep stops, everything just stops. It became silent. You could just hear the three of us breathing. My manager told us to stay at the front door, in case the man came back, and that he go around the house to see if the man needed help or something. We nodded at him, and he walked towards the back. The two of us heard footsteps, but not from upstairs. They were coming from below us somehow. We both looked completely puzzled and confused. Honestly uneasy about this entire situation. That's when we heard our manager scream, and heard frantic running. He ran to the front of the house, where both of us were, and told us to go back into the car, and that we're leaving. I've never driven a car faster in my life. My manager explained to us that, when he was walking around to the back, he saw a group of people in the darkness, surrounding a sort of makeshift campfire. But it was very small. He got closer to them and noticed in the middle was a baby deer. The group of men were sitting around laughing at it, as if they found it funny. The minute he said that my heart almost stops. The new guy and I quit right after, and I heard the manager quit a month after this. I never worked a delivery job again. Obviously, we walked into some kind of cult meeting, I'm just glad we left when we did.